All right, guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out another video. You know, the title on this one, Best Shallow Bait, it's, uh, it's kind of sounds clickbaity, but I'll tell you what, to me, it certainly is. In a lot of situations, I found this bait, uh, this technique is kind of a system to be my go-to for shallow water fishing. And, you know, the age-old debate is if, you, if there's shallow weeds and docks and, and laydowns and stuff, Hey, do you flip them? Do you throw a jig or a Texas rig in there and, and low and slow pick it apart? Or are they active? Can I throw a spinner bait, a bladed jig, swim jig, top water over the top and pick them off fast? Now, a lot of times the answer is both. Uh, you know, some fish want it one way, some want it the other way. If you're with a fishing buddy uh, or in a team tournament, then typically the guy in the front, hey, I'll throw a spinner bait. I'll try to pick off the active ones. You go behind me and let's and throw a Texas rig in there pick off the inactive ones. If you're by yourself though, a lot of times when you're out scouting for a tournament, out by yourself just fun fishing, hey, if it's a tournament, you got a co-angler back there, you probably wanna catch them all and not leave too many. Uh, this is where the system comes in. And I like to do both. It's a, it's a technique, like I said, a system where I can get a flip and also the wind and catch the moving fish all in the same cast. That's why I think it's so neat. I'll get into it. I'll talk about the bait and the trailer. It's kind of the system, the cast that you make, believe it or not. I think that matters a lot to be able to get them out. Uh, the retrieve definitely does. So it's kind of a whole system. I'll get into the, the when, the where this uh, works generally, obviously a shallow water pattern. But uh, then there's some bait mods if you're more in grass, uh, if you're really in thick cover. And then finally, the rod reel line. It matters a bit, and uh, that'll help you put all those fish that bite in the boat. So stay tuned. I'll run you through it. Well, if you fish very much, you figured out the bait probably pretty quick. Obviously, what are the two baits that are the go-to for casting and for flipping? A jig, you know, a skirted jig is going to be, if you're trying to pick apart cover, especially when it's cold, muddy water, that's going to catch big ones. A bladed jig, you know, the chatter baits, this is the slobber knocker, all those. For moving baits, casting around, it catches the active fish as well as anything. So what I've combined, I take, it's a slobber knocker, that Berkley uh, bladed jig that comes through wood really, really well. So I'm able to flip it and then I use a Max Scent Creature Hog. It's a, it's a beaver style bait. And it's a little, you know, usually people are using action tails and stuff, but I like this, this beaver style bait for a few reasons that I'll get into. But this combo, what I do with it is I'm able to flip it into pretty thick cover. I'm throwing this right into uh, flooded bushes, into laydowns, way up under docks and stuff. I'll fish it like a jig, let it go to the bottom, sometimes work it low, sometimes work it high, and uh, get a combination of I'll be able to catch the flipping fish on that fall and not snag with this very often, and then also be able to swim it out and get a combination of the ones that are chasing. So the bladed jig, like I said, the slobber knocker, the main thing on that, one, I want the lightest one. So a three eighths ounce, I don't want something that falls super fast. Uh, and I also like the slobber knocker just because it, of the bladed jigs that I've fished, it knocks the hardest. You're typically throwing this in mud and, and shallow cover. And it also is the most brushless one that I've found. It, the, the way the head goes, it just comes through laydowns and stuff better. So that helps. And then the trailer to me is the most important. This max scent, obviously, the, you know, the scent part of it, uh, when it's cold water, that's when I think the max scent shines. I like it, but it's also ultra soft. This thing really flaps when it's going through. It looks like a do-nothing tail, but it's a little bit different. People either put a, a paddle tail, like a, you know, a, a minnow style bait on the back, or they have the regular, you know, it used to be the live magic shad, and now it's a power stinger and, and all those type trailers. It's the flap. Some people like that. Some people put the twin tail trailers on the back. Uh, this, the creature hog, one, it's flat on the bottom, makes it skipping into cover really, uh, easy. And you're going to find that's really important. That's, that's kind of a key element of it. Uh, secondly, it's flat and it has a, uh, even tail on it, like a paddle tail minnow or something. The problem where you snag a lot or any, any sort of minnow trailer with a single leg is it's going to want to kind of fall on its side. And then if it's a lay down, you're going to snag it with any sort of twin tail, it, it makes the bait run more upright. And it also, with this flat, it really glides. And it seems like the glide more than just a straight drop or something that, that glide tends to, for this system, seems to work better. And then also keeps it upright. So when I, I skip it in, it's gonna fall like this and the hook, 
being protected, it comes down and lays down like that versus if you have a paddle tail or something, it falls on its side and then you're snagged up right away. So to me, the Creature Hog, I don't know, that's that's all I use on this system. And it looks a lot like a jig. It's got that, you know, the old pork chunks and stuff. That, that's that been the traditional best jig trailer forever. And then you get the combination, like I said, of the bladed jig with the flipping jig all in one in the same cast. Okay, so like I said, this is really a system. It's one of those you have to combine the bait and the cast and the location, the season, all of it together. So the when and the where, uh, the where is definitely, this is more of a back of a creek or stained uh, muddy water type uh, shoreline bite. It's shallow water. A lot of times I'll do this in two feet and less. It's the very shallow laydowns. Or if it's the spring, you know, it's you're looking at five feet and less. Uh, I want wood primarily. That's where it's going to be best. Laydowns and flooded bushes far and away. That's my favorite thing that I'm going to look for. Uh, docks that'll work, work uh, too. I like it a lot of times in two feet of water, like super shallow. If it's stained and muddy, especially around like, like spawn time and stuff where you know they're going to be on the bank, that makes it pretty easy. I mean, it, it's just one cast then. That fish, I'm going to put it in there and he's either going to spook or he's going to bite it. I don't have to mess around my 20 cast. I come back an hour later, but, uh, you know, he's either going to do or die that first time. When, uh, like I said, around the spawn, it's great. Those fish are going to be spawning in that shallow stuff. Uh, Pre-spawn through the post-spawn, bluegill spawn and stuff, going to be good as well. If you have muddy water, uh, you know, that's always going to hold largemouth. The backs of creeks uh, is a great place like year round where maybe the main lake th those fish will be out there on the ledges and all that stuff in the summertime the backs of the creeks are always going to have some shallow fish uh, like i said anytime it gets muddy is going to help keep some fish shallow but really the seasons uh unless you're on a river like mississippi river or something like that red river they'll they always live shallow on your lakes and stuff though this is going to be pre-spawn through the post-spawn is going to be best and then again in the fall when they're kind of getting up there shallow and uh if you have mud, like I said, in the cover, you're definitely going to find them around there. So I'm going to show us a few casts here in a minute where you can actually see how I'm presenting it. But the one thing you're going to see is key is going to be finding an alley to put this into the wood cover. Even though it's pretty weedless, you want to get in an alley, especially to bring the fish out. And to me, a skip cast down that alley is the key thing. So for a couple reasons. One, you want an alley. So if this is a lay down, I don't want to cast across the limbs and then I have to fight the fish up and over it. I want to come down through these alleys. I'm going to find a gap and I'm going to skip it into them where when I hook this fish, I'm going to bring them out. Now, the next thing is I can pitch it and lay it in there. And I'll do that sometimes if it's a really small gap that I have to put it in or there's a whole bunch of limbs here and I have to bring it up and over and kind of drop it in on them, I will pitch. But what I prefer is that skip. Now, the main reason when that skip, one, it, the fish, it just, it's a natural presentation. It's like a minnow or a bluegill scurrying across the water. I think it gets their attention and it makes it look like fleeing prey. So one, it's, it's quiet going in there. Two, it gives that fleeing bait fish. But here's the other thing. I want, if I'm the fish back here and you are casting to me, I don't, I don't want the bait to come right here, land on them. And that's when I first figure it out. And I turn and I grab this and I swim deeper into the cover. When you flip a jig, you flip a Texas rig, how often does that happen, right? You pitch it in there and then oh, he's buried up and oh, I can't get him out. Now, if you throw a spinnerbait around the cover and you don't throw it in there, then that fish comes running out. And that's what I'm trying to do. With the skip, I bring it down this alley. I skip it to him. And I'm hoping that as it skip, skip, skip coming towards him, that fish says, ooh. And I see it, and he's moving out of the cover towards the bait before it ever hits the bottom. Getting him, like, I'm starting to, to draw him out there. And, you know, this is, <laughs> this is me speculating, but I'll tell you what. I've, very few times do I do the seesaw battle in the cover. Uh, to me, this, this definitely it's effective. So I s try to skip it into him, into the heart of the cover still, but I want that fish, when it skips, 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 and it stops, like way back in there, he's already moving. So when he hits it, I set him and he's coming straight out. So an alleyway and skipping it to there to me are very key in this. So once you skip it in there, what do you do? Do you just throw it in? Like if you're normally throwing a spinnerbait or a bladed jig or a square bill or something, you throw it in there and you just retrieve it out, maybe a little stop and go. If I'm throwing a jig, I just throw it in there, let it go to the bottom, yo-yo it a couple times, pull it back out. 
Well, basically what you're gonna do is a little bit of both. Initially, I love to let this thing go all the way to the bottom, just fall like a jig and it's gonna lay down with those pinchers. It's not gonna snag up, but a few times, and it's gonna be pretty easy to get out normally, even if you do mess up. But man, so many of them hit, I'll say 50% of your bites is on that initial drop. So th skip it in there and just on slack, let it go to the bottom. That line will come shooting towards you or you feel boom, like a thump and just set the hook and you're jig fishing, pull them out, you got them. Now for the other half of the time, when it goes in there, you have two choices. And sometimes I'm gonna bring it low and slow and sometimes I'm gonna feather it a little more high and I'll do a little bit of variation, but this is where I can mix up and I'm fishing a jig and I'm fishing a bladed jig all at the same time. So once I let it get that first drop, then if it's more priest, if it's around the spawn and those fish are right tight to the bottom, or if it's a real cold front and they're not very active, I like to slow roll that thing right on the bottom. And it's almost like those fish, either you come across one on a bed that's just outside of the lay down, or they're just not moving much. And if you just like swim that thing real slow and they're sitting there, it comes right at their face, they just, ah, you know, bite it. So low and slow, let it go to the bottom and just a slow, steady, steady retrieve. A lot of days when it's, when, when it's cold or it's a uh, spawn time, that's gonna be the best. Now, other times they're more active up chasing minnows and that's where I'm gonna let it go to the bottom. Then I'm gonna pull that thing up instead of just start to retrieve it. I'm gonna pull up like I'm lifting a jig and then I'm gonna reel it high and then I'm gonna feather it. And you'll see in the video here in a second, kind of feathering and pumping up and down. You can mix a combination of the two, and that's what I like to do. I let it. I like to let it fall to the bottom, or almost all the way to the bottom, a couple times in the cast. So it's basically like two pitches in the course of a cast, plus I'm still getting the swim. So that way you get a little bit of the best of both worlds. It's that flip and the swim all in the same retrieve. So you see here, this is me fishing uh, this spring. I have some shallow laydowns here. And look how I'm skipping it into the heart of the cover, let it go right down there, that thing comes out. If it hangs up, you can give it a pop and it usually comes free, it's barely in there. But you'll see that I repeatedly put it into different alleyways. If they have a bed or they're setting up when it's cold like this, a dark, uh, cold day, those fish, it took multiple casts to trigger most of the time. Other times when they're more aggressive and they're chasing, and especially under two feet of water, man, I just put it in there. Like I said, that's ideal. And I can make one cast, I either spook him or catch him, move on to the next one and can fly through a whole bunch. But you can see here that I keep on picking this apart. And a number of the fish that I caught that day would be on, a, on multiple casts, either to the same area on a really thick lay down or just picking apart every single alleyway that I could get to. Now, another thing you'll notice is a lot of these, I'm fishing it most of the way back to the boat. So many of the fish that spawn, there'll be a thick uh, lay down like this, and then they love to put their beds just like a foot in front of that lay down. When you flip a lot of times, we're always throwing into the heart. And if, if there's fish actively feeding in, in there, or maybe a female's waiting to move on a bed, you'll find her. But if they're more relating to that bed, you miss a lot of those better females because they're sitting on the perimeter. You catch them sometimes on a, on a spinner bait, but a lot of times they're not super active where they're coming up chasing. That's where this system, where you skip it in there, but then you bring it out in front. Like I said, you get about 50% of your fish on that initial pitch and it hits the bottom. And then 50%, it's halfway back to the boat, out in the middle of nowhere where you wouldn't have even casted. And boom, you hit one and it turns out to be a great big one just lurking on the edge. And when you look at this clip here, you can see that yes, this catches big ones. I typically don't catch a lot of males doing this. For whatever reason, this seems like a spawn, pre-spawn, post-spawn fall. These are bigger fish that either own the lay down, this is their little hunting ground, or they're the one that's gonna spawn in here and they take the preferred cover. It's the most obvious lay downs, the most obvious cover in these backs of the creeks. Ones that only have, say, a dozen in the whole back of a big creek, that's super prime time for them. And when you catch one, a lot of times it's a great big fish. You can get your kickers doing this. Now, a couple variations, a little bit on color and stuff too, but a swim jig, if there's more grass around there, or they're really off, they're just kind of finicky. You know, the bladed jig has a thump. Sometimes everybody's throwing it. If it's getting a lot more pressure, uh, typically I'm gonna go with that bladed jig just because these fish, if they're getting pressured, it's probably, you're probably not in the right spot. But you can go behind with that same, with the uh, creature hog trailer and use a swim jig. It's 
just gonna be more subtle. On this, you're gonna have to supply the action. There's no blade there, obviously. Uh, I either do kind of just like little slow pumps, like it, you're kind of just hopping it a little bit, swim it, hop it, let it go to the bottom. Or the Alabama shakes, you know, that Southern swim jig style where you just kind of constantly shake the uh, the rod tip with trimmer. That's a great way to, to fish it as well. So you mix that in with the, the jig with the drop and then the shake as well. Then if it's really, really thick cover, sometimes they want it more in there and I'm going to flip these. But still, when you're flipping, and this is the, the Berkeley flipping jig, you can see it has a flat head. So again, easy for skipping when you put that creature hog on the back when you have the flat head the flat body that thing's gonna skip really easy back there but when you're skipping a jig and you're getting a few chasers or maybe you're not just keep that in mind that even when you're skip when you're flipping a jig why not try to swim it a little bit give it some shake give it a few pops on the way back if you're starting to get more retrieves on the or more bites coming back to the boat that's probably time to go to the bladed jig and sometimes you're just getting a bonus bite you just get one or two extra instead of just reeling it back in it, if you just shake it just a little bit on your way back, you'd be surprised how many follows you get. And a lot of times that's the biggest one of the day. So you can add a few. And then the one other thing you can do that a lot of us used to do it, you slow roll the spinner bait and then you would kill it. You'd come over the log and kill it. Kind of the same concept. You can put that creature hog on the back of this or just fish a, a single Colorado. Uh, these will hang a little bit more, but they do it when they're swimming, that, that wire comes up over the logs really well. That's why I like the trailer when I let it drop when it comes down, then it's gonna stay more upright. But uh, I mean, this has caught a lot of fish too, and it's just a little bit different look. You can't fish it as a jig quite as much, but it still gives a little bit, if they're really on shad, uh, sometimes that's that's better. Color, you can see this is a white. You know, if they're on, that's where I'll go with the spinnerbait, if they're really on the shad. But I found black and blue is hard to beat. You're usually doing, uh, this is gonna be best. It seems like in stained water, that black blue is good. And then I mix it, you know, it's kind of ugly, but it's just black, blue, and green. It's it's the, the two, but green pumpkin or a watermelon sort of color. It's the two most effective uh, colors I know of for bass fishing. I like that combo. That's what I use 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, you know, green pumpkin with some flake is nice. I will do, they have the kind of like the watermelon red and gold. If it's sunny and muddy, that little bit of flash, uh, I do like that. And then we have, uh, this is the, the green pumpkin with the watermelon laminate on the bottom. That actually, to me, the, the watermelon on the bottom almost looks like chartreuse. Again, in muddy water, if it's not a bright day, if it's kind of an overcast day, I like that little bit of flash of chartreuse. And then the one other thing, I mean, if it's really mud or sometimes they're so hard on, on black blue and stuff, the goat color, which is black blue on one side, green pumpkin on the other, I mean, just another staple color. So basically though, 99% of the time, like I said, black, blue, some sort of a green pumpkin or green trailer, you're set. All right, so rod reel line. Uh, like I said, it's a whole system. I would say the rod's the most important part of this, but the line and the reel, all of it kind of fits into the system, helps make it work. The line, I use 15 pound fluorocarbon. I use that Berkley 100% fluorocarbon. Uh, they're not line shy. I don't have to go 20 or 25 because that's gonna, it just makes it hard to skip and cast. And I'm typically not fighting them through the tree. I'm bringing them in the alleyway. So 15 is plenty big there. It still allows me to cast that, that bait pretty well. And then the reel, I use, this is a Revo STX. It's an eight to one gear ratio. That's pretty fast. So for a couple things, one, uh, these fish, like I said, they're coming in the alleyway. The good news is this fish is coming out of the cover. The bad news is he's picking up your, your bait, and by the time you realize he's got it, a lot of times, he's like five feet out and streaking at the boat. There, it's two feet of water. He can't go down. He can't go. He, he's coming at you. So basically, he's it's just making a beeline, and you get a lot of slack. Plus, if you skip in, you make a bad cast. I don't want to take a lot of, I'm, I'm trying to make as many casts in a day's time as I can. So I want the high speed to take up the slack when he charges at me. I want the high speed. So if I make a bad cast or my cast is over, reel it in, throw it back out. So high speed's good. And the other thing, I think this is underrated, but again, that fish grabs it. He's coming right at you. You have wet hands. You just caught a fish or, you know, it's raining, slippery. I do love th these new Revos have these huge oversized handles. And it's, you know, the ones, it looks like a, a 300 pound offensive lineman drinking daintily out of a little teacup or something. You can barely get your fingers on it, like all the spinning rods or spinning reels, right? 
This one, I mean, you can mash your hand on it. And when I throw in there and I'm, especially like me, I throw right hand and I transfer it over and I have to get my grip. If I, if I miss that and I slip off there and then I'm, I'm late, he's, there's so much slack. You miss those fish and you're like, oh my God, I just lost like a five pounder that came right at me. The big handles, I like it. I can get a grip and bring them at, right at me. Now, the whole thing you've heard me say like 10 times now, oh, coming at you, putting a lot of slack in it. This is the Fenwick. It's a 7.5, so it's longer than a lot of guys, you know, would throw a, a bladed jig with, especially around, you know, more precision stuff. It's more like a flipping stick. I'm, I'm skipping. I'm either pitching on a skip or I'm just roll casting a skip. That longer rod allows me to be accurate with that, put a little bit farther out there. But the main thing with the longer rod is I can pick up line. So when that thing's coming at me, one, I want the long rod to be able to take some of that slack out again. And then this is actually, it's a 7.5, medium heavy, but it's moderate fast. That means this thing is going to have a ton of tip, not just at the very tip, but it's going to bend like about half the way down the rod to the handle here. So that gives a lot of extra play where I can keep those fish uh, hooked up. Now this is the world class. This is Fenwick's top of line rod. It's probably a little bit of overkill. I like the little bit extra sensitivity for that jig bite, but these, these are kind of, I mean, this will run, it's like a $400 rod. The great news about Fenwick, they build all their series exactly the same. They have the Eagle where you can get this exact same bend and everything. That 7.5 medium heavy modern fast for 99 bucks and it's, like a joy to fish with. And if you want a little bit more feel, you can get the HMG series for 149. So those, I would say, if you're gonna get started on it, that's a great uh, price point to get in there and get the action that you want and still get some great feel. So this system, like I said, I love it. I've used it shallow fishing, especially in the springtime for the last couple seasons has been most of the, the good checks I make, the good days I have. Man, this thing is a, a player in it. Either get my big fish doing it or a lot of days it's, all I'm doing, and guess what? All your buddies are out there scoping and looking at all those fish offshore. All those bushes and those lay downs, that muddy water that they don't like to fish. Guess what? The fish still live back there. So go back, check them out, catch some big ones. Hope that helps you guys. See you on the water.